Fire from Olympus isn't the strongest start we could have had to Batmay 2022, but it is unique. Maximilian Zeus is the owner of Gotham's internationally significant Maximilian Shipping Company. Some time ago, in order to save his fledgling empire, he started carrying cargo for the mob. Eventually, the stress of the situation caused Maxi to have a psychotic break. He now lives in a fantasy world, thinking of himself as the Greek god Zeus, and conducts himself as such. After one of his employees was caught trying to pass along incriminating information to Commissioner Gordon, Maxi attacks him with an electrified staff, nearly killing him. It's soon revealed that Zeus's company has come into possession of an electron discharge cannon, a weapon created by US and European militaries, capable of firing destructive lightning. Batman goes to confront the mentally unstable CEO on the roof of his Greek temple-inspired office building, where Zeus is found to have gone fully off the deep end. But it remains to be seen if his delusions will have disastrous consequences for Gotham. While this isn't exactly an exceptional episode of this classic series, it's not bad. The steady hand of frequent director Dan Reba helmed the script written by Judith and Garfield Reeves-Stevens, based on a story by the one and only Paul Dini. The Reeves-Stevens pair had previously penned scripts for Dreams in Darkness and The Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne, both of which were solid installments. Fire from Olympus was the last episode they worked on for the show. The Dong Yang Animation Company put together some good-looking scenes here. A few outstanding sequences are even part of the episode, including Batman's battle with a boar and the horrific, fiery crash of one of the famous police blimps. The latter really made a strong visual impression. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that the layout services were handled by Spectrum, who, if you didn't know by now, was responsible for some of the best animation across the whole series. Maxi Zeus is a character that was created by Denny O'Neill and Don Newton in 1979, and used here and there over the years in the Batman comic books. He has a richer backstory on those pages than he does in his one only appearance in this series. The description of his psychotic break into insanity is only explained by his assistant slash girlfriend Cleo about halfway through the episode. Unfortunately, because of this, his characterization feels a little too rushed, and we only get a small glimpse of him attempting to break through his mythological fantasy. Cleo? I'm sorry, I, I can't... Thou art no longer fit to be among us! It would have been nice to have had a scene or two featuring his real personality to create a more well-rounded villain, but I do feel like we saw this kind of thing before with Two-Face and a few others. Perhaps it was best to not repeat too many of those beats. Although I do like this line from his girlfriend Cleo, who's holding out hope that he'll come to his senses. He's not living in the real world anymore. Maybe you can relate to that. Got him. Spoiler warning for those who are interested in watching this one without wanting to know how it ends. By the finish of the story, Maxi is defeated, and we see a sad, sympathetic side to Zeus when he's brought into Arkham Asylum. Now at last, mighty Zeus is home. I think he's among the most deserving to actually be there, as it's clear he's not in control of his actions and seems to have a more believable-ish condition. As he walks to his cell, he names the other inmate patients after Greek or Roman mythological characters, bringing them into his fantasy world. There's beautiful Demeter, goddess of the harvest, and double-faced Janus, lord of beginnings and endings, and merry Hermes, the trickster of the gods. Earlier in the episode, he refers to Batman as Hades, which I thought was a nice touch, too. I like the lightning rod staff as a weapon, but other than that, I think he's lower on the list of the show's antagonists. Maxi Zeus later showed up in episodes of both The Batman and Harley Quinn. As was the case with just about everyone else in that Harley animated series, he was highly entertaining. There are much better episodes coming up this month that I'm really looking forward to reviewing, so I hope you stay tuned. Batman Year 3 is just getting started.